Hello everyone, it's Bertie here, the messy recycled hippie chick. I am just sitting out here in my art room. It's 80 degrees today in Kansas. I have had a fun-filled day and I am sitting out here in my art room with no heat on, no, it just, it's beautiful out here. So, I thought I would just click on and visit with you guys while I do my chores. What I've done is, I've been going through this old book. What I did, okay, let's just start at the beginning. Let me just show you the chain of the process. I'm getting ready to do another memory jug. And what I do first, because the crock is so shiny, can you see? Oh. Well, welcome to me making a jiggly mess here. Okay, so the crocs are so shiny that I cover them with gesso before I glue my little goodies on. So I did that. I glued my good my gesso on and I moved it over to dry because you know how gesso takes quite some time to dry. And then I had this bowl of gesso left over and I still have a lot and I need to use it for something. So I got this little book sitting beside me and I started, you can't even hardly see it, but I started just putting gesso on them, on the pages. And I thought what I should do is go through after I gesso all these pages and just put a stamp on each one. I can rip it apart. I can stick it on something. I just have a lot of stamps, a lot of them that I've gotten at garage sales and stuff or given to me and I've never even used them. So I thought, let's just go through stamp pages show you what I've been working on and visit and let's just do that. So these are my stamped pages. I thought I'd show you my stitches square. Let's see here. I already showed you this one, didn't I? Where Janet Nash was making ruffles. So I joined her. Okay. Well then I saw the other day she was doing a video and she was doing something called couching where she was just laying strips of material or yarn or whatever she had down, and then she was just sewing over the top of it to lay it down. So that's what I did with my last square. I just had different trim that I laid down in squares, and I guess I'm learning to couch. So that was my um, slow stitch a square for last week. Then Janet has this cute little giving tree somewhere in her neighborhood where she walks and she was making these cute little, one of her videos, she was making these cute little stuffed happy faces because everyone who knows Janet knows she loves happy faces and she loves hearts and she loves mushrooms, but she was making these little happy faces out of scraps. That's where I learned the couching. She was couching on the little smiles. So I made a heart along with her. I wrote on the back, Janet Nash, 2023, London, England, so that my kids would know when I'm gone where I learned this from. But I, al I also may make a bunch more. And whenever we go to the Winfield Bluegrass Festival or camping somewhere, wherever we go, I think I'll keep these in the camper and hang them here and there just for a little, you know, kind of like people hide rocks. I might just hang my smiley faces or my crazy hearts or whatever. What she did on the inside of these was super cool. She just took her little bitty bits of scrap material and chopped them up into tiny little nuggets and used those for stuffing. So that's what I did there. So that's what I've been doing this week. And you know, I'm an a Janet Nash junkie. So today I was watching her and she's scraping rainbow colors on papers. So while I'm watching her do that, I decided I would make me some pages out of my scraps. I just glue the scraps together and 
you know, make my own pages. And then I'm going to glue a piece of material on both sides. But what I thought I would do first was scrape paint on. So after we're done with this, we can move on to scraping paint or gluing these together with material. Yeah, lots of chores to do today. So let's get started. Um, I've had a busy morning. I have already been out mushroom hunting. I went to a friend's ranch and I packed my backpack. I packed my coffee. I packed my travel art kit. I packed my little blanket to sit on and I took off in their woods looking for mushrooms. And then when I came down to the river that runs through their ranch, I sat up my little blanket and I, well, that didn't work very good. And I sat down and did a page in my nature journal. Well, that is not going to work, you guys. Look how brittle that paper is. It's just falling apart. It's just tearing. Okay. Or this is not a great stamp. What do you think? It's plumb full of ink. It's just not coming off. This is just not a good stamp. Isn't that sad? I had never used it before. Let's try it one more time. Let's give it one more time before before I pitch it. Because I don't want to get rid of it and have somebody else have a, a hard time with it. Maybe just for mark making, but why keep a wonky stamp? I'm just pitching it. Okay, so I was down on the river, and where's my book? I remember this book I made, my little nature journal. I took it with me in my backpack, and I sat down by the river, and I wrote out a little telling what all happened so when my kids find it they'll know where I was and blah 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 and I wrote down I found this sticker in my travel art kit it says whispers of nature carried through the wind it was so windy today oh my gosh it was practically blowing me away but down the banks of the river and on the rock bar it was very calm and so that's where I sat so I have to tell you my little story I was listening to a podcast with the guy that played Luke on the Gilmore Girls. He's doing a podcast. And if you know who Luke is on the Gilmore Girls, he always wore a flannel shirt on the show. And as I'm ripping things out to collage, I run across this dictionary page that said flannel. So I had to incorporate that and tell the little story about it in my journal. And I loved that this little piece of this letter said, 1886 so I wanted to make sure I had that date on there because it brought me joy it's just a little simple collage but when you're outside you can't do a whole lot so that's my first entry in my nature journal I did find a couple of bullet casings which I thought were pretty and I'm going to have my husband drill a hole through the side of them and I'm going to string them on my dingle dangle area because I don't have I don't have anything on my dingle dangle area yet. So I'm going to run those through here and I found I have several rocks with holes in them clear through. So I thought I would also hang uh you know hang some of those rocks on my dingle dangles. I was kind of upset that I didn't have my little bottle tied on there because I did find a cicadia shell that I could have put in my bottle, but I didn't have it ready and my cicadia shell got crushed. So, wor uh, words to live by. Next time I go, I'll make sure I have a bottle on my journal. Anyway, I'm sitting down by the water and... Um, 
I'm writing in my journal how absolutely calm I am. Like I'm, I'm alone, first of all, because this, my friend who has this ranch, it's probably 1200 acres. I mean, it's a thousand or more acres. And I'm in an area that is a locked gate that you have to have the code to to get in. So I know I'm locked in this big area. We may have another dud. It's supposed to be this ghost of a man. Anyway, I'm in this locked area, and uh, I'm writing in my journal how absolutely, completely comfortable I am sitting there by the river, and all of us, I get up to get a bag because in the woods I saw some stinging nettle, and I was going to get a bag and go back to where I saw the stinging nettle and pick it because, oh, okay, well, it was just the paper for that one. Maybe I should dig the other one out. So I got, I, I had my back to the little path that goes up to the pasture and out. And when I stood up to get my bag, I noticed, because I had my headphones on, I was listening to the podcast, when I turned around, there was a car sitting at the top of the bank with a man in it looking down at me. And that freaked me out because no one should even be able to get in with me except for, you know, whoever, the owners or whoever. I Marco polo the owners and I said, there's a red car with a man. And when he saw me get up and look at him, he backed his car out and left. I described the car to her, and she said, no, that's no one we recognize. So I start getting a little nervous, and then I heard gunshots. And I'm like, holy cannoli, I'm out of here. I packed up my stuff. I headed back to my car, and I got the heck out of Dodge. And she Marco Poloed me back and said, don't worry, it's a friend of my brother-in-law's. He has come down there to do target practice. I said, too late. I'm scared. I was gone. But I did go get my nettle first. <laughs> I mean, we can't leave without the nettle, right? <laughs> so I had gone back and I got my nettle and um, put it in my car and off I went. So I'm excited tonight to have some stinging nettle tea. Oh, I just smeared it. I'm going to give it one more try. You know, I hate to throw something away that looks so beautiful. But I did not find one mushroom. I was looking for morel mushrooms. And it's just too dry out. Just, I'm going to put this in my smaller than a dollar bin for collage. But I had a wonderful time just taking pictures of trees. And this is okay, this is an okay one, but it has to be for certain paper. And the water was beautiful and clear, and I saw turtles on logs. And I saw a crane and two um, Canadian geese. So I did enjoy my time alone down on the river until I didn't enjoy it. But let me tell you something else. The last time I went to the Lyme doctor, I'm kind of trying to talk soft because I'm standing up so I can get a good push on my stamps, and I feel like my, my mouth is right here at the phone. 
So the last time I went to the Lyme doctor, I told him, you know, what can I do for my, my body pain? I have a bad back anyway, and I'm pretty sure I have arthritis. And then the Lyme agitates the pain that you already have, and I just can't really stand it. I don't take pain meds or anything. Um... I don't know. I just haven't. And he said, why don't we try a low dose of prednisone? He said, I've had some of my Lyme patients have great success with a very low dose, five milligrams of prednisone, darn it, for pain. So... I said, okay, I would try it. I'm glad I didn't. I kind of was leery about taking a steroid because, you know, it makes you gain weight. And I'm already fluffy enough. And um, and I just don't know anything about steroids. But this last medication I was on made me feel terrible for the whole month I was on it. So I was glad I didn't start it then. But I just hurt so bad the other night that I decided, you know what, I'm going to start it just to see what happens. You start out with two pills, so that would make it 10 milligrams. And then you, you get started with two, and then you bring it down to one and stay on one. So it says to start it at night. Oh, it is a good stamp. Look, I just think sometimes they don't work good on that gesso. Well, let me tell you, after just one night last night, I woke up this morning. My hands, my arthritis and my hands aren't, it's not stiff. Because see, I can't even shut the, my pinkies don't even go shut. They're just, they're getting crooked and knobbly and... My hands were not stiff. I didn't have to sit on the edge of my bed for a while to get my bearings. I walked the entire time in the woods, through the woods, mushroom hunting and never hurt. I came home and found one tick, of course, on me. That freaked me out again. I figured I'm taking enough antibiotics, I ought to be pickled, so no tick is going to bother me. But my husband said, go get, in the, go get in the bathtub right now. So I did, and I always put Epsom salts in my tub because it hurts so bad to sit in the tub. I'm, I can't hardly get out of the tub because my back hurts. And when I went to grab the side of the tub to get out, I noticed... I didn't have any pain. So just one day of prednisone has taken care of pain. I think now I'm, I mean, this could just be one freak day, you know. I don't know. Where, where's my pages at? Have I used them all? But uh, so far, so good. So I'm kind of excited about it. But anyway, I'm standing on this cement floor out in my art room today, which usually kills me. I am absolutely pain-free right now. So I'm hoping it continues. Tomorrow I help Patty garden. That'll be a big test. <laughs> you guys, look, it's definitely something about a gessoed page with stamps. Isn't that crazy? The finer stamps you cannot use on a gessoed page. Let's try something else. Let's try. This is called gesso, but I'm not convinced it is because it's very smooth like a paint. It's not sandy. So let's try some of it. And see what we come up with. Let's see here. Where's my scraper?
see see how much that other gesso is very much uh, kind of clear and sandy. So let's try some of this on some pages. Okay, so this is called Ceramicoat Gesso by Delta. And my other one was called... Let me get it so I can show it to you. Okay, well, this is just going to lead to a gesso, tech, uh, gesso testing. The one that did not work for us was this one. Okay. I have now gone through and painted some pages with this one. There over here. And I have painted some pages with this one. So, let's just let those dry and we will do a little test. And we will just see what is what. Now, until those dry, I have to find something to stamp on. So let me find some uh, substrate. Okay. We'll just do some tissue paper. And we can tear our pictures out of the tissue paper. go. Well, I don't know what my problem is, but things are not working well. Things are not working well. I don't know. That one did good. So if they do good, I'm just going to make several. So I have some little images to have. Um, I'm sticking to my gesso. It must not be dry on my under paper. pretty good. I'm not going to tell you because, you know, these are from garage sales and stuff, so there's no sense in saying, oh, I got this from here, and this is number such and such, and sue and sue, and I, I just don't, don't know. Don't know, don't care. Just use what you got. Just dig into your cute little stash of stuff you already have, and use it. Okay, look, we're getting we're getting some images here. So I'm enjoying the tissue paper. I may have to stop and and blow dry my uh my gesso so we can get on with it so you guys don't have to You know what would be fun is to do a stamp swap. You know, so many of us have so many stamps. If we did like sheets like this of the stamps that we have and then trade them off with each other, that would be different images we would have. Some people may not have very many stamps and, uh, and this would give you a variety if we just shared our stamps with each other. Okay, I have dried this one. Let's see how this one works. And I have dried this one. Okay, let's do the same stamp on both of those and see what kind of image we get. We already know what the other one does. It hardly even shows up white and it did not show a print very well. I 
Okay, this one does well, I think. And that one does well. Okay. So. We have come to the conclusion that. This gesso is not the greatest. First of all, it doesn't leave much of a white covering. It's more, it's almost like a clear gesso. And it does not stamp well. So, these two are okay for stamping. There we go. Look at that little test we did. So, I don't really care what I grab now. I'm just going to start stamping. Yeah. All right. That makes me happier. Whoops. I just ripped that one. Ripped one. That's okay. And that's not dry anyway. So let me dry it. Okay. Plus, I used this ink pad was out of ink. So I don't even know what it is. And I refilled it with this ink refiller. So I don't even know if they're supposed to be blending well together. But that's how I roll. I just use what I have. I'm kind of getting a little happier here. Uh-oh, I didn't re-ink it, but let's see what a shadow. Yeah, not too shabby. Not too shabby. Oh, I have so many. I have so many stamps, you guys. I'm not real crazy about this shadowy one. It's kind of picky about its paper. Okay, let's do one more peacock. I really like this peacock. And then I'm going to do some... Oh, shoot. Well, this peacock... Okay, I should put these aside. These are picky about what paper you use them on. So, obviously, it's still not a good gesso stamper. So, that'll be in my un smaller than a dollar collage sheet. Let's see what I can do with... Let me dry a minute. I'm pausing you guys all over. To okay, these are just going to be some texture stamps because... This one just has a bunch of flower names on it. So let's see what we can come up with with that one. I don't know why it's not getting in the middle very well. Very crisp and nice. I like. Okay, so there's that one. And let's try. This is not very dry yet, but that's okay. Let's try this one. This is just another texture. stamp pad needs to have some more ink dripped on it, but we'll see. Okay, let's try this one. Not crazy 
but I really think it might just be because it's not inked up real good. Let's try this one. See, this one's inking up easy. I don't know what the deal was. I think maybe there's a, a difference in quality of rubber. What do you think? I'll take it. There's definitely a difference in rubber because, see, this different colors and everything and this one did not grab the ink like this one did so well look at us we're just doing all kinds of testing today on stamps so there you go we had a little bit of um art therapy time i got to tell you about my my morning and uh we've done 31 minutes so we won't I think I'll shut it off and maybe start another video to paint and put together my pages, clear off my space, and uh, and we'll start again, okay? Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye from Birdie.